Hey you guys, happy Tuesday, long time no see, right? Welcome to my studio. Um, for those of you who are new here, I'm Dory Patrick. I'm a mixed media artist and um, I am checking in with you from my home studio here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Um, and it's been a while. Uh, life has been kind of crazy, so <laughs> there haven't been any videos, but I just really felt like I wanted to check in with you guys. Um, I love hearing from all of you, and uh, when you tell me that you miss me, that makes me feel so good. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, we are having some really uh, weird weather here in Iowa. Um, so the lighting in here is really strange. I hope it uh, translates okay on this video. Um, we we just had like some hail <laughs> um, a little bit ago. So it was rain. It started off like a light rain and then this noise started. And it was so funny because Callie Mae, our yellow lab, she thought somebody was like knocking at the door and that's like the only time she really barks is when she needs to alert us <laughs> she was barking like the mailman was here or something and it was hail Ugh. but i think we're okay it wasn't a whole lot of it and it wasn't huge there were a few pieces that look kind of huge but i think our roof and our car are okay we will do some more inspecting later on, but holy moly, it's been like we have had tornado warnings and all kinds of stuff. Like spring is just coming in roaring like a lion and uh, we don't appreciate it, to be honest. But anyway, thankful for being safe and dry in my big old house <laughs> and, um, and thankful to be here with you. Um, I have, there's so much to talk about, so I think probably I'm going to really focus on one topic today. I'll show you some work that I, uh, completed back in February after taking a workshop, but, um, yeah, and then I'll tell you about other things in some future videos, I think, so I don't ramble on for too long, but, um, Let's see. What do I want to share today? Oh, well, first of all, things that are making me happy. Well, a thing that is making me so happy right now are these pink overalls. Whoops. And I'm knocking stuff over. I mean, come on. These are from um, Duluth Trading Company, you guys. Um, and I know many of you already know I'm like an overall, I'm obsessed with overalls, but Duluth Trading are my absolute favorite. They have a style called the Heirloom Gardening Overall, and it is my favorite of all of their, all of their products. It's, the fabric is, um, perfect it really is perfect for gardening like you get filthy in them and they just wash clean um i wear them in the studio they are my uniform they breathe they are comfortable they have this stretchy little um shoulder straps that i mean they're just so fabulous <laughs> and i have them I won't even tell you how many I have. And no, this is not a paid sponsorship. I love them so much. And so um, I'm always stalking their website and waiting for the new colors to come in. And they came out with pink. I about died. I think I squealed really loudly. And my husband was on a conference call, so I don't think he appreciated my squealing. But, um... <laughs> I was like, Brr, order, click, click, click. They came in shorts too. So I got the pink in, in short alls. Um, and there's a fun uh, periwinkle color now. I mean, oh my God, I can't even. So I'm very <laughs> excited. 
excited about pink overalls. Yeah. Um, so that's what's making me happy right now, today, on this gloomy day, I'm actually able to wear a fun color in overalls. Um, and these will get paint on them. They're not going to be treated preciously. Um, I just, I'm just so happy to have them. So um, there are a couple of things where the Patrick budget like knows no bounds. Like I don't think about spending money when it comes to art supplies, books, and overalls. <laughs> so yeah. That's why we keep working so Dory can have her overalls. Anyway, that's kind of silly, but I thought I would share these. I know a lot of you also love Del Duluth is like excellent um, quality and I highly recommend them. Okay, I'll stop blabbing about the overalls. I made a little um, list here of things I wanted to chat with you about so that I don't forget because it's been so long and I'm a little rusty, but big news is my show is up. Um, this is the show that is titled It's All a Strange Dream. I'll try to drop um, some a promo pic into this video so you can see it. Um, so this is um, has been in the works since the end of last year and I had been working on it the beginning of this year pretty feverishly and also fitting in a couple of trips in between there so I was a little stressed about getting it all done but um, I got it done and it's up. Um, so the deal is, this is down at CSPS Hall in the Nubo District here in Cedar Rapids. Um, it's an old um, Czech uh, social club kind of building that has been revamped into a really cool um, community arts center. So there are galleries where art is shown. There's a a, the a stage and a theater area where you can take in shows and musicians and um, it's just a really really cool resource for our community and I was asked to do a show and to um, partner with my friend Gay Sharp Richardson who is a fiber artist um, and it's up so it's up and it's um, you can view it the whole month of April. For those of you who can't join us um, in person, um, I have a meet and greet coming up and so I'm hoping to get a bunch of photos um, from that event and I'll share them here and I'll share them on the socials as well. Um, I just have been kind of refraining from sharing the images until the meet and greet is over. And the meet and greet is this Thursday. So if you are local or if you're able to come and join us here in Cedar Rapids, um, the we're calling it the weirdo meet and greet. So it's my show and Gay has her own show called It's um, That's Rap. And then we have a collaborative show on the bottom level when you first arrive called Where Two Friends Meet. So it's kind of a long story and I'll probably devote this topic to another video sometime. In fact, I should just go take you over to Gay's house and we could talk to her. Um, she is a longtime friend. We were business um, owners at the same time in Uptown Marion and she and I did have done a lot of collaborating over the years. Basically, we hand things back and forth and, and do stuff to them inspired by whatever the person did before us. So um, that show downstairs is all art that the two of us have touched. Now, shout out to Gay because really the only reason that collaborative show even happened down there is because she was willing to like work her butt off and finish a lot of the pieces and do a lot of work to make it happen. I was really stressed about getting my show done um, because I knew I'd be traveling and my time was going to be really tight. So she stepped up and willingly um, turned our collaborative show into this. It is amazing. There are um, 
sculptures, there are wall pieces, there are some hanging mobile things that hang from the ceiling. It's so fun. And so if you aren't local, I will try to get some good photographs for you to check it out. But thankfully, she stepped up and did this amazing job and put hours of work into making the collaborative thing happen for, for both of us. And I'm so thankful. Thank you, Gay. So this Thursday from four to six, Gay and I will be in the galleries meeting and greeting, um, handing out hugs to anyone who wants them. Um, we'll have some cookies and you can ask us questions. Um, if there are pieces that are available for sale that you wanna purchase, let me know. We can arrange that as well. Um, it's just gonna be a fun, party to celebrate our accomplishment in getting this done and we um well i probably shouldn't speak for i think i can speak for gay and say okay i think we want to do this again because we really did have fun but i probably would pick it during a time when i'm not leaving town twice <laughs> so that i can be a little less stressed but if you're local come see us thursday we'll be there 4 to 6 p.m and we'd love to see you um I would love to share with you kind of the inspiration behind the show and uh, what my little pea brain was working on when I when I came up with these ideas. Um, it was really a lot of fun and it turned out great. So very proud of it. Um, so yeah, so that's the big news. That's kind of what's happening this week. Um, the meet and greet and I have some friends coming from out of town. Hello, SND. Um, they're gonna come for the meet and greet and then I'm going to be uh, doing my best to entertain them and show them some of the sites here um, at the end of the week. So I'm looking forward to some friend time this week and um, just celebrating an accomplishment you know so yeah so yeah while I was working on that show I took two trips one in February one in March and um, today I'm gonna just kind of dive into the February trip um, that was to Orlando to um, take a workshop with the fabulous Emily Ball and I will put links to her um, I think she's, I know she's on Instagram. I'll see if I can find her website as well and I'll put a link there. Um, she came from the UK, you guys, to, and um, the, she taught two workshops. I was only available for the one. I took Flora Bunda and um, it was a an intense three-day painting workshop um, focused on the subject of flowers and I'm telling you, it was probably the best workshop I've ever taken. I think so far, it's the best workshop I've ever taken. Well, first of all, um, I got down there. There was a, a, because Iowa weather sucks, there was a snowstorm coming on the day I was supposed to leave. And so in a panic, I, my hubby went online got me a ticket for a day early and I literally packed in an hour and got on the plane and got down there to make it because we were so afraid that I would get stuck or canceled or something the, the next day. So I, I started off the trip kind of stressed out because I really, I literally packed everything in an hour, clothes, art supplies, everything. And um, that's not a way to start a trip, <laughs> but it was what it was. And I and um, the wonderful hosts, Lynn and John Whipple and uh, Debbie and Brian Miller, hooked me up with stuff I couldn't pack, and um, it was wonderful. So I got there a day early. I had a day to kill while I was down there, and of course it was beautiful down there. It was like in the 70s, and um, so I Ubered around to a few spots. I went to their local art museum, which was impressive. I found some art and found out about some artists that I didn't know about um, visiting that museum, and everybody there was so friendly and welcoming to me. Um, 
Let's see, what else did I do? Oh, I got my, um, I got a pedicure because I was in Florida and I brought some sandals and I thought I need to get these Iowa feet cleaned up for show. So I got a pedicure and I, um, oh, and I found a local art supply store um, and bought some fun things, which I'll tell you about on another video, but um, yeah, so, and I will try to share a few of the photographs that I got from the workshop. It was, um, fun and wonderful. It was well planned, well thought out. Emily is an excellent teacher. She just knew how to push all of us in the right way. Does that make sense? Um. I felt pushed, but not in a bad way. I felt like she was really stretching my little brain and my heart and, and trying some new, um, new ways of working. And um, that it was just really the best. And to, I made new friends. I, um, we had a night out where one of our fellow students hosted a little shindig at her house and it was just lovely because you know when you're in the workshop I mean you're you're interacting a little bit but you're really focusing on the work um, and there isn't a whole lot of time for chit chat so it was nice to have that Saturday I think that was Saturday night everybody was just as wonderful as I knew they would be so it was like it wasn't a surprise. It was like, oh, I knew they'd be wonderful, and they were, and it was great. So I have, so I came home from that workshop. Um, that was, let's see, mid-February. So I was in the throes of working on my show for CSPS, and I had all this new, all these new ideas and new ways of working. The problem was I had kind of picked a theme and a, a look for the show I was working on. So it was killing me to not just drop everything <laughs> and start like, you know, start something completely new. So, um, but I realized there's no way I would get this show done if I just suddenly dropped everything and kind of switched gears. So I kind of developed this habit of when I would start my day in the studio, I would get a sketchbook or get some paper or something and do some quick exercises that I learned from the workshop so that I could still practice that muscle memory, but then I would switch gears and and work on the show that I had already started. So now that the show is done and I'm getting back into, um, I'm in production mode now for upcoming art festivals this summer, I'm able to experiment more with some of those ideas um, that I gathered while I was at the workshop. And um, it's, it's a learning curve, you know? We worked on paper at the workshop and I do not usually work on paper but I loved it and I'm figuring out how to translate my ideas to canvas and wood panels I'm telling you take workshops and classes um, if you start feeling stagnant or um, are just looking for you know a new idea or a new way to work it is so beneficial to take workshops from folks that you admire um, and I love learning about their process you know how how they look at things and how they interpret things it just it really will snap you out of your slump and kind of give you this new way of seeing and doing so Highly recommend it. And you know what? What I say Emily's class was the best I've ever taken. I benef I have benefited from all classes that I have taken. It is beneficial to just see the viewpoints of other artists. Um, I always take away something, some little nugget that helps me in my work. So, yeah. So there's my two cents. Um, yeah. 
yeah. So then in March, um, I had a cousin trip to Santa Fe, which was also holy moly inspiring. I mean, very inspiring, very fun to be with my girls and very inspiring. I mean, there that place is like dripping with art everywhere you look. Sorry, throat's a little scratchy. But I'm going to share my Santa Fe stuff on another day. I took tons of pictures. We went to the International Folk Art Museum, and I wanted to just move in there. <laughs> it was so, it was really mind-blowing. It was almost too much. But what is it Mae West says? Too much of a good thing can be wonderful. <laughs> so it was wonderful. Um... Yeah, so I, I was thinking today I would, um, I'm going to flip my camera around and have you, and we'll look down together at the tabletop, and I'm just going to flip through some of the work that I came back with from Emily's workshop, and um, I think that might, I think you guys might like it, might like just seeing what um, came of that workshop and then kind of where I'm going to go with it. Um, going forward. So I'm going to um, meet you back here and we will um, take a little peek at those things. Okay, see you in a bit. Hi guys, we're back at the work table. Um, and I'm going to just kind of whiz through these um, in no particular order. Um, these have been kind of jostled around and I don't remember exactly the order that I did everything in, um, but I will just kind of share my thoughts um, on these pieces. And um, this is everything that I created in the Emily Ball Floribunda workshop. Um, uh, and it was just so great. So let me move this aside and we'll try to do this in some kind of orderly fashion here. Um, one of the exercises that we did that was really new to me was um, working with charcoal. I do not usually work with um, chalk and charcoal. I think I have an aversion to it getting all over the place. <laughs> It's not like I'm a neat freak or anything, but um, I don't know. Charcoal has always just kind of been something I didn't really dabble in. And so we did some really quick exercises um, with some sketching uh, with charcoal and chalk. And these are a couple of pieces um, where we were very carefully observing different aspects of different flowers and then rendering them in the charcoal. Um, somewhere, I don't know if I even, oh yeah, they're coming up, they're bigger. We also did some, um, we did some blind contour drawings with charcoal. Um, I think a couple of these had some other hands touch them too. So we sometimes did exercises where we would um, switch with each other and give each other our drawings or we would literally get up and move to the next person's station and alter someone's piece and that everybody loved that that was such a fun exercise to kind of just get out of your head and um you know experiment a little bit and respond to something that somebody else did that was really exciting um so yeah here i i am obsessed with this shape of a vessel lately i don't know what it is but i you may find it repeatedly in some of these drawings and i'm even incorporating that into paintings it's kind of like this weird little shallow bowl that doesn't make any sense for holding flowers but i love it I love it. So this has been a great reference for me to remember to just kind of keep it wonky. Um, and this one, I there are parts of this that I really love. Um, this flower here, this very subtle rendering where I'm not spelling out all the details because I have a tendency to want to do that. You know, spell it all out give them every single petal, but you don't have to do that. 
to indicate that it's a vase of flowers. And so that was a good reminder for me. The way I got these home without getting charcoal all over the place was um, hairspray. I had a little travel, um, I think the brand was Tresemme Hairspray, um, that I set these with and it worked so well. So I was able to transport these home without getting charcoal all over my all over my stuff. So that was a good find and I'm actually going to invest in a bottle of that hairspray because I found that it held better than some of my fixatives that I spent good money on, you know? Um, so another exercise that we did was cutting up um, our, let's see, hopefully I'm getting these where you can see them, okay? We took a scrap piece of paper and um, cut it up into eight pieces. I think I have eight of these. And we did quick little timed um, exercises with these. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly what all of our prompts were. Um, I think maybe one of our prompt one of our prompts was to like eliminate half of the painting or turn the I think this one I definitely turned it the other way. She said to rotate it and then keep working. Um we were working super fast, super loose. These were so much fun. So much fun and for getting out of your head. Um and you know some of them I love more than others. Um but as a whole, I just, I love them together. Um, so this has been an exercise that I have now taken to the studio as a reminder of when you feel stuck, cut up some paper. I mean, I just, we, we didn't even have, I mean, I think I maybe borrowed scissors from somebody, but I was not careful about cutting these. This was not precious, um, to me. And, um, it just frees you up. Yeah, I think this was a favorite of several people and mine. I just love that one. I kind of am thinking I might frame that and just keep that one, but yeah. So that was one of the um, one of the other quick exercises that really helped me get my, my, my juices going. Um, and let's see, and then at some point, we really started studying some, we picked um, a floral arrangement. First of all, there were like a mil, there were not a million, but there was lots of flowers. Flowers, flowers, flowers everywhere. Beautiful vases full of all kinds of flowers. So this um, little grouping was, was based on a little flower arrangement that I had put on my table to work on and I repeated. I just repeated. I took, I had these all laid out and I just did the same thing, but kind of different to each one of these. And I am really tickled with the results of some of these. So this was a cute vase that was black and white, had black and white triangles on it. It didn't even have a handle on it. I just put that there because I felt like it. Um, but I was really trying to keep that momentum from the fast and the loose and, um, playing with this one. I'm, I love how squat the little vase turned out. And it wasn't like that in real life. It was actually closer to this kind of shape, but I was trying to push myself to use some artistic license in the pieces. Um, and then I did some little baby ones. Let's see. I hope you can see those. Yeah. There's three little baby ones. Again, same markings, same but different. Same, same but different. And then when they started getting too precious for me, too cutesy, I would just, I think this blue came from just a moment of frustration when I was just getting too neat and too cutesy. And so I just took these and I blobbed them in my paint tray. And that's how I got those fun marks that sort of junked it up a little bit, if you will. Yeah, these are fun. I'm excited to come back to that idea. And this one little guy, I did him at the same time. Let's see if I can bring him up closer. But he just wasn't jiving. 
Um, I can't remember. I think the, it just was too tight and it was just the little vase was not working for me on this tiny little piece. So I took some white paint and just smooshed it and altered it a little bit. So while this was still from that same series, um, I got a totally different look from just being ruthless with it, really. That's kind of what it came down to. Um, one takeaway from this little set I got is, remember that white paint is your friend. You can edit with that white paint very easily and quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's fun. See, I'm getting excited even just like looking through these again. <laughs> um, this is an abstract floral that I actually didn't quite get all done with this. I added some things when I got home. I added some crayons and, and stuff. But again, you are kind of seeing that, um, I don't know, this rounded, this boat shape on the bottom. I have been kind of on a kick of starting a piece with some dirty paint water. And so that's what these drips are here is dirty paint water from the previous session. Then when I come to start on it, I've already got something to respond to. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm, I'm loving this one too. Um, this one I got done there. Um, we were, another exercise we did was feeling the flowers and so we were responding, oops, sorry if you're, we were responding to how the flowers feel in our hands, and so we were making marks in response to that. I also got into some kind of representational. So one of my challenges was um, getting too representational. I was getting really excited here. This abstract stuff was really jazzing me. And then sometimes I would go back to wanting to paint more, uh, like it, this is obviously a pot of flowers. And so I, it took me a while to kind of get into this groove, um, but I think there's some good stuff in all of it. Um, this really pushed me and I got really excited about it. And sometimes I would go back to what I knew how to do, which is okay, but then you get into some stuff like you're combining the two and that's what these these two are a little more representational and I think I need to see if I can adjust my bring you out just a little because the papers are getting a little bigger there hopefully that will work so here's where I kind of combined the two ideas. It's pretty obvious that this is a pot of flowers, these are pots of flowers, but I was really trying to abstract them a little bit more. These kind of get me excited too. I do like them. Um, I think I'm gonna try this idea a little bit more and simplify a little bit more, clean them up just a touch. Yeah, but this is a mix of um, acrylics, graphite. Um, I think that's it, because I think that's all I packed, you guys. Like I said, I packed in an hour. I wasn't able to bring everything that I that I thought. This is one of those pieces that was a group effort. This was one of those where we, um, I started this, and then we all traveled around to the different stations and, and made marks on other people's papers. And so this was a mix of graphite and charcoal, lots of charcoal, and some other chalks that I really, I love how that one turned out. And I set that with some hairspray too. And I think I'm gonna need to bring you out just a little more. Let's see, here we go. Yeah, really happy with that. Um, these are some more abstracts that I worked on. Uh, because I was in such a hurry um, packing, I just packed primaries, um, my primary colors, and I struggled a lot with my color choice. But you know what? It was actually a good thing that 
pushed me into really relearning my color wheel <laughs> and how to create darks when I don't just have a black on hand or, or whatever. Um, so that really challenged me a lot. Um, actually, yeah, this could really go either way. This was a really fun, I think this was a timed exercise. Um, and then I get back into that kind of nest or circular um, way of working, which I really, really like. And I'm going to try to get you a little closer. This was one of those that started with some dirty paint water, and I just kept playing with it. Love this. Um, this was a warm-up exercise we did where we just took a big piece of paper and did little warm-ups on the, on the larger piece of paper. I, some of these I really love. I really love this one. Some of them I don't love as much, but there still is, th I look at this as sort of, um, this was some note-taking. Does that make sense? You're making notes. Some of them you love, some of them you don't, but there are things you can grasp from these little itty bitty paintings that you can use down the road. This was a really fun, I think this was a timed exercise too. So then I have just my large pieces left. Um, this was a large study of that theme that I showed you just a little bit ago and it looks like I have to zoom you out again. Oh, I don't know how much further I can zoom out but hopefully you get the idea. Um, this was that same black and white vase that I fell in love with. Um, I think this is uh, 18 by 24 ish. I started with my dirty paint water and then just started going to town. Doing these little triangles, you guys, was so meditative for me. I had a lot of fun doing that little pattern. Um, and I think this was an, a Derwent Inktense pencil, and so it's water soluble. So I was able to, um, if you can see that, I was able to just get it a little wet and kind of smudge it a little, which is what I am after. I do not want perfect, perfect little triangles. I want some grunge. Does that make sense? Not sure if this one's done. There probably could be a few other little touches I can add, but it's a great reference for me because I remember how I felt when I did this and I want to do that again. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, this one I do not like. It is representational, more figurative, more like how I usually paint. And so I kind of got stuck. I think this was early on. This was the first day where I was really just kind of um, doing what I usually do. I hadn't broke out yet. I hadn't had that epiphany. But my hubby actually really <laughs> likes this and there are some good little nuggets to take from even the stuff you don't like. Um, the things I want to take from this are these two flowers right up here. I love this outline which is like the ghost of a flower. It's not you know, completely spelled out for you, but you know it's a flower. And I really love the big juicy marks that I got on this. I think that was a sunflower on the side, the side of a sunflower. Um, so that's the thing. Not all of these are gonna be what you want them to be. Um, you just do it, it's a piece of paper, no one died. <laughs> it's, you know, everybody's fine and you move on. And so then I started getting it on that second day. This, and I have one more to show you after this. This is where I was really getting the gist of hinting to flowers, but abstracting them a little bit. And um, I love, I really, really, really love this it has so many little subtle marks some really juicy stuff 
Um, I think I got some charcoal in that one even. And that was not usually <laughs> what I want to do. But um, I love this. I love how this came out. And I want to go back to this. Um, this way of working. So that one. And then maybe my favorite one. I don't know. Maybe my favorite of the of the weekend. Um, this was also when the epiphany hit. Um, it was abstracting those flowers. Um, I think in this one, we were actually feeling the flowers. So we would pick a few flowers out of the vases and hold them behind our back and kind of play around with expressing how the flower feels. Not, you had to let go of how the flower looks in your mind's eye and really focus on how it feels. And so that was game changer for me. It did just a new way of looking, a, a, a new way of feeling and working. So this one really excited me a lot. And you can see I really got into that kind of boat, shallow boat vessel. It kind of feels a little nest-like to me too, which I sort of, I love that idea as well. But um, yeah, um, so yeah, again, folks, if you are looking to push your creative practice to another level, um, I highly recommend workshops and classes to, they are worth it to um, give you a new set of skills, um, go there with an open mind, go there being willing to be a beginner. Um, there were many times throughout that whole weekend I was feeling uh, awkward and uh, kind of shitty <laughs> sometimes. Um, but there were also moments of triumph and moments, but isn't, that's art making, isn't it? That's how it is. It's a roller coaster ride and you just got to get on, buckle in and, uh, try something new. And I'm just so glad I did because I have this new set of tools, this new way of looking at things that's really going to help to push me forward. Um. So I'm excited about that. Well, I have gone on for a very long time. I hope this video finds you all happy and well. And um, I would love to hear what you're up to creatively. Um, and I'm going to try to be back here again soon. Um, and if you're coming on Thursday to the meet and greet, I can't wait to see you. Bye, friends.